recently during our book launch that we co-authored this book called Ignite Your Health and Wellness. <laughs> and, uh, we both happened to write about a topic which I believe and she believes is so important to know, and that is the history of modern medicine. And I'm really mm -hmm. excited to talk about this. I'm kind of weirdly excited to talk about this. Um, <laughs> share the same passion in kind of knowing that everyone needs to know this. So first of mm -hmm. all, before I continue to uh, gabble on, Katerina, thank you so much for coming here and allowing mm. you. Thank you for having me. It's a delightful to be here. Yeah, great to have you here. Katerina is a medical doctor turned Ah, holistic health practitioner and intimacy coach. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's quite a that's quite a mouthful. And I think, I really <laughs> but um, I find it so fascinating because Katerina does come from a medical background. And uh, without further ado, I think we should just kind of dive in. But first of all, Katerina, mm -hmm. can we start with your story? Can you give us a little bit of a background on you? Well, um, yeah, I left the practice of medicine about 17 years ago um, after going through a really difficult patch to the point where I, I really believe that I had post-traumatic stress disorder from, from what I experienced going through my medical training and, and working in the corrections um, industry for a while after um, leaving medical school and residency. Um, and I really never thought I was going to go back to medicine. But then about uh, you know, five to seven years ago, I went through another really rough patch where I, I had my daughter tried to several times to commit suicide. And it to put me on a path of spiritual development um, to I had to heal myself in order to be the parent that she needed. And I found my way back to being a healer, but it's just a very different way of healing from what I originally thought I was intended to do. Um, more coming from a place of a holistic approach, um, really focusing on how do we create disease in the body um, and how are, do our habits contribute to that in the forms of what we eat, in the forms of how we treat our bodies, how we, whether we exercise and um, how we store past emotions and energy gets stuck in the body that can uh, create disease. So mm -hmm. I actually healed myself from um, like 20 years of chronic depression and um, pr completely transformed my own health personally. And that led me to want to be able to work with people to achieve the same tra transformation that I went through. Amazing. Yeah, like most people in the holistic space, everyone seems to have their own personal story of why they got in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. So it's, it's wonderful to hear your story. Yeah. So um, a topic that we both wrote about, in fact, we had to kind of cut back on what we we're writing because uh, we were advised <laughs> to, um, is the history of the current medical industry. Mm -hmm. And I don't, even that word industry might turn some people off. Paradigm. Uh, paradigm. paradigm. Yeah, the I like to say paradigm. The modern paradigm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to hear it because I've talked about this myself and it's one thing mm -hmm. hearing it from me who doesn't have a medical qualification. Mm -hmm. It's very different hearing it from someone who does have the medical qualification, who has mm -hmm. gone through the training mm -hmm. from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I don't know if yeah. you use that expression over here, but it's mm -hmm. uh, that's why I love having that conversation with you because you've done it. And mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you to share with the audience what you discovered about the history of modern medicine. Absolutely. I think it's so important to understand where we've come from and how we got here, because in many senses, when we make our choices about health, it's going to be based on our understanding. And we've come through this time where there's been this dominant paradigm in place, but it wasn't always like that. Um, there was a time in the early part of last century um, when the Carnegie's and the Rockefellers basically 
um, they began to exert a huge amount of control over medical education in this country. They actively um, shut down any colleges of medicine that were not practicing under the what we call would we call the Western medical paradigm or the allopathic paradigm of medicine, which is based on there's a symptom and then you prescribe a pill and you treat the pill with the, the symptom with the pill. And that's how most of our healthcare has been administered for the last hundred years. Um, they actively would put anyone else out of business, anyone, you know, who is practicing chiropractic medicine, naturopathic medicine, they would um, vilify them and, um, you know, term them as snake oil salesmen and, and, and things like that oh, and really wow. vilify them um, to drive them out of business. They drove all of the other um, medical colleges out of business that were not practicing this particular paradigm of medicine. And, they did so point quickly because right. not only that they they call them quacks and this is why mm -hmm. we have this term called quackery it was mm -hmm. around before that but it really came into the the awareness of people mm -hmm. because uh, they wanted to demonize anyone who wasn't um, practicing mm -hmm. allopathic medicine as a quack and it's still around today <laughs> 110 years later and this was all a product of what the what, what we now know as Carnegie and Rockefeller medicine as a result of the Flexner report of 1910. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, no. I interrupted you then. I just wanted to add <laughs> to what you were just saying, but it's probably a good time because you're drinking water. Yeah, uh, it's just a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Yeah, absolutely. The Flexner report came out and they used it really to vilify these other these other practices and to um and if you actually, if you go back and you read the Flexner report, it's so dated. And they definitely had a a political agenda. Well, not just political agenda around this. This was this was based on money. This is dollars and cents. They invested heavily in the pharmaceutical industry, and so they had. Um, I don't know if you know about the history, but the Rockefellers had originally made their money as oil barons. And in doing so, they actually created something that was a, a monopoly that allowed them to amass this huge fortune for which they were taken before the Supreme Court of the United States and found guilty. Oh, wow. But by that time, they had so much power that even being found guilty by the Supreme Court couldn't touch them. So what they did know. is they went and they <clears throat> created the Rockefeller Foundation, which is a philanthropy. So it, it, it's, you know, there's supposedly this is all charitable and philanthropic and, you know, they're, they're um, supposed to be seen as, as saviors, but really it was it, the, the, their philanthropist, was really a way to control what get, gets taught in the medical curriculum. And so because they are donating so much money to the medical schools, they have a great deal of control over what gets taught. And so they teach this paradigm, which is all about prescribing medicines to treat symptoms and of course, they've heavily invested in all these pharmaceutical companies. So they are making back. So in, in a sense, they created the exact same sort of monopoly in the medical industry that he had originally created in the oil industry. Um, he just became a pharmaceutical baron um, rather than a, he, you know, and ha had a pharmaceutical cartel as opposed to the oil cartel that he had originally. That's so interesting. I didn't, I didn't actually know that piece of history about him going to the Supreme Court, um, but I, mm -hmm. I, I am aware. In fact, I, I actually interviewed uh, Dr. Daryl Wolf yesterday on this subject as well. You know, the doc of mm -hmm. Deep the Truth About Cancer series, mm -hmm. and what he said was the American Medical Association was near on broke around 1910, so they partnered mm -hmm. with Carnegie and Rockefeller, and I believe mm -hmm. J.P. Morgan as well, and they created this this system. <laughs> yeah, 
they, they commissioned the Flexner Report of 1910, and it's eliminated all the competition to patent Absolutely. petrochemical medical education, which basically mm -hmm. means education about pharmaceuticals. Patent petrochemical medical education is about pharmaceutical drugs that they were manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So like a preordained which meant that they knew what the outcome was going to be. Absolutely. And then lots of interesting things happened over the next 40 odd years or so. When all, mm -hmm. As you said earlier, Katerina, that all the, all the natural approaches to medicine were shut down. I've got a timeline in my mm -hmm. book. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, just like you said, a lot of them were shut down after that. And, uh, and this whole term called quackery came about. And the problem is that it continues on to this day. They still have a huge mm. amount of influence over what is taught in medical schools. And if it's not profitable to the pharmaceutical industry, it is suppressed for the most part and doesn't isn't taught. Even um, the specialty of functional medicine, which has just come up in the last, you know, maybe 20 years since I graduated from medical school. I mean, it wasn't really around or it's just at the, its fledgling stages when I was starting out and I didn't know anything about it. Um, but even that, you, you, you actually have to choose to go into functional medicine um, in order to study at any of that stuff. It does, it's not taught in medical school. They don't teach nutrition. Um, and even the things that are taught in medical school are usually about 15 years behind the current medical research. So like, for example, the research regarding the gut microbiome has been exploding in the past few years, how much we understand about the gut microbiome and how it impacts your health, how it impacts your emotions, how it impacts so many different aspects, we've gained a huge amount of information. It will take 15 to 20 years to get that information into medical school curriculum. And so even a doctor who is graduated today um, from medical school is about 15 to 20 years behind the current medical research. So unless they're choosing to go into a specialty that specifically looks at things like functional medicine and who recognizes the importance of nutrition in creating health or poor nutrition in creating disease, they're not necessarily even going to hear about it. Such a good point that you just made as well uh, about mm -hmm. that delay, that lag. I often have people call me um, with skin conditions because it's one of my focuses. Mm -hmm. I had eczema for 30 years. I always thought it was a genetic disease. Now I know it's yeah. not. It's a result <laughs> no, of the no. environment in my body. Um, so I got rid of it. Exactly. Thinking, emotion, <laughs> it's, all, it's all environment, isn't it? Um, but this, uh, this, this woman who had just qualified in Sydney as a medical doctor was in hospital, or just before she went to hospital is when she, uh, we, we spoke. And she said she was covered in head to toe dermatitis mm -hmm. and um i said to her she had done her own research beyond the medical training that she was doing and she mm -hmm. found that the gut link between gut and skin health and i said wouldn't it be amazing if like you and i worked together and then you healed yourself from the inside out heal your skin from within is what i was talking about and then you can share this with your community about the power of gut health over skin health and every other condition Mm -hmm. And she said, there's a lot of resistance about that in, in this community. And she said, mm -hmm. my dermatologist categorically told me that there's no relationship between gut health and skin health. And mm -hmm. I paused and went, that's the equivalent of being told that there's no relationship between the engine in your car and your car moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's so clear now. Mm -hmm. It's so clear, yet doctors are still prescribing, yeah. dermatologists, skin doctors are still prescribing steroids. I've mm -hmm. lost pigmentation on my skin and various parts of my body. Yeah. Antibiotics, immunosuppressions, mm -hmm. various mm -hmm. vaccines, not understanding that our gut health yeah. has a direct link with skin health. So yeah. I just wanted to bring that in there because, and we didn't end up working together, sadly. Well, and, it's, uh, but it's so important. It's like I knew someone who um, was, he had just a recently retired fr from his career as a medical administrator. And we got into a discussion over gluten and mm -hmm. why I don't eat gluten. And he ridiculed me and thought, and, you know, made, um, 
references to some nonsense study they did that um, basically saying, you know, he, he was referring to it, you can't determine its correlation versus causation and stuff. But the thing is, you can't do these kind of environmental studies on, you, you, there's, you can, it's easy to do epidemiologic work and look at, um, the increased use and pesticides increase in various things and increased disease rates. But how are you supposed to do um, a double blind placebo controlled randomized trial on, mm -hmm. you know, nutritional things? Are you going to do put people in a hotel for three years, lock them in and only allow them to eat what you say? I mean, it's not going to work. There's, there's nobody with, and you don't make money off of prescribing people to eat a whole food plant-based diet. Yet when you put somebody on a whole food plant-based diet, these disease processes get better, they go away. And it's yeah. so important for us to understand, especially right now in the face of COVID-19, because the way you nourish yourself is having, every bite is having an impact on the health of your immune system. Every this is bite. Such a, yeah, such a major mm -hmm. point. Um, yeah. I've been talking about the immune system as well recently because there's even, you know, sites out there, even governmental sites in Canada saying there's nothing you can do about your immune system. There's nothing you can do for COVID-19. Um, it's ridiculous. Um, the most the immune system is everything. you can do. It's like the... Yeah. <laughs> Well, there, 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 there are two <laughs> epidemics, it, right? There's the epidemic of COVID-19 and there's the epidemic of fear. You know, so yeah. fear suppresses the immune system because you activate yeah. your, your sympathetic um, system and that turns off your immune system. So, so many people are operating out of fear. So that itself turns off your immune system. And then you compound that by eating processed food with lots of sugar and and you know gluten and you know um, carbohydrates that sets up a focus of inflammation in the body so the inflammation also takes a hit on your immune system so between the fear and the the poor diet you know if you look at the COVID-19 cases that have been fatal all like at least 80% I think more it's more like 85% or more of people who die of COVID have pre-existing health conditions. They have things like diabetes or hypertension or something. Not everyone. I mean, there are some young people, there are some people with no known other medical history that are dying. And it's very serious. And I think we do need to isolate and, you know, do our best to prevent the spread of the contagion. On the other hand, there's a lot that you can do to keep yourself healthy so that if you do get exposed, you have the maximum chance of coming through it just fine. Totally. I'm so happy you talked about chronic inflammation there because mm -hmm. we, we, have, we have so much power over the immune system, don't we? And you touched on a mm -hmm. number of things then like gluten and dairy and the typical things mm -hmm. that cause inflammation in the body are going to suppress the immune system because inflammation mm -hmm. is basically the body going, the immune system going, ah, stop. <laughs> it's like white flag. Thing, <laughs> it? it's, it's, yeah, it goes on to high alert, trying to protect you from like all of these foreign invaders, putting all the energy into just trying to stay alive. So it has mm -hmm. less energy to kind of focus on fending us off from bugs and viruses. Mm -hmm. Plus some people are taking medications all the time, causing inflammation. So we got like a double whammy of inflammation and medications creating this whole cacophony yeah. of ridiculousness in the body. And yeah, I'm so glad you just mentioned that. And, the, you know, yeah. just, just a couple of other points. You know, we talked about diet and we, you talked about stress and the hormones of fit or this, you know, this, the stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, how it down regulates the immune system. We're also being told to isolate. And recently, um, Dr. Sheba actually was talking about how isolation um, down regulates the immune system as well mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know social um connection is huge for the immune system right. the um, whole thing around community and immunity yeah a really important thing to remember there is um that you can take two people with the exact same circumstance and how they react and respond to it mm. is going to determine the their body's response okay so 
you can take one person in isolation who spends the whole time um, feeling sorry for themselves because they're they're isolated by themselves, um, scrolling through their Facebook feed and looking at all of the um, inflammatory things that pe people are posting, and they're like revving up and revving up and revving up and revving up their their sympathetic system because it's like the the they're like this and it's like they're and and those are the people who are going to have the harder time both in terms of their mental health and also in terms of fending off the disease because they're they're so chronically activated in their their sympathetic system that they turn off their their immunity you can take another person isolated alone doesn't have anybody to hang out with but they take a different approach. They're not spending all day scrolling through their Facebook feed. They're taking time for meditation. They're taking mm -hmm. time to do yoga. They're connecting mm -hmm. with friends or other loved ones through phone calls or Zoom calls. And, and those are people who are choosing, instead of choosing to shut down and contract, they're choosing growth. Because mm, you know, there's um, the, the, there's a Chinese character for the word crisis, and the the Chinese character is a combination of two different Chinese characters. It's the character for danger and the character for opportunity. So yes, this is a time of great danger, but we also have amazing opportunities, amazing amount. We have this we have this ability for the first time in our lifetimes to really slow down, to really mm. focus in on what's important, to have that time to really go within and really, I think the, the, the opportunity we have for consciousness and awakening on this planet is we've never had an opportunity like this. And you can either choose to shut down or you can choose to grow. And if you choose to shut down, then you're going to come out of this, you know, six weeks or eight weeks or however long it turns out to be un not as healthy as you were, probably having gained weight and, and all these other things and in a worse financial situation. Or you can choose to grow. You can choose to start a new business. You can choose to create something that is going to last beyond this. You can choose to improve your mind. You can choose to, there's, you have a choice every morning when you get up, what are you going to focus on? Yeah, that's massive. I love that. Um, yeah. I mean, I can't, I want to repeat everything you just said, but there's no, there's no point. Um, <laughs> It's, I think that's such a powerful thing to say, you know, we, we can choose to focus on fear, we can mm -hmm. choose to focus and watch the news, which is mostly mm -hmm. BS anyway, or mm -hmm. we get to choose creation and love and surround ourselves, even if it is on, on Zoom mm -hmm. for now, uh, mm -hmm. with community. Um, I want to circle back to something you just said about fear, uh, because mm -hmm. th there's the nocebo effect. And, yes. um it's something you and I discussed the other day mm -hmm. and I've done a few Facebook lives on it. And it's how most people are familiar with the placebo effect. Not many are yeah. familiar with the nocebo effect. So the placebo mm -hmm. effect works positively to help us heal. You know, we're taking this pill thinking we're going to heal from it. Symptoms go away mm -hmm. because of the mind, power of the mind over the, the mind is so powerful. Over the body and the mm -hmm. own pharmacy of chemicals that we secrete through the power mm -hmm. of our belief. Scientifically mm -hmm. shown now. The nocebo mm -hmm. effect works in reverse. And if we're listening to the news, which is mostly not correct anyway, and we're listening to these nasty mm -hmm. statistics, which uh, I won't go into that now because we don't have time, but let's just say they're inflated. And mm -hmm. um, believing it all, then we start to, that's the information that the body starts to hear. It puts mm -hmm. us into that fear, fear response. It puts us into mm -hmm. fight or flight. The blood drains from our gut, which is where 70 mm -hmm. to 80% of the immune system is located, and mm -hmm. we end up living on the, or by the hormones of stress. So That's the nocebo effects, yeah, I just, I just wanted to add that because you, you touched mm -hmm. on what we get to focus on. That's why I'm saying stop watching the news. Like, find out what, 
what we need to do to stay safe and I you know mm -hmm. uh, for everyone, everyone's safety and for our safety and follow the rules and stuff and honor that but let's not watch the news too much just maybe three minutes a day max mm-hmm yeah, it doesn't take long. <laughs> or something like that, in, or not <laughs> at all. You're up, right? Because of the no, so really choosing where are you going to put your attention, mm -hmm. it's so important. And that, that nocebo effect is really, really powerful. Um, they've done studies like the placebo effect. They've even done like sham surgeries where they just, they cut an incision on the outside of the knee, but they don't really do the surgery. And those people do just as well as the people who had the arthroscopic surgery. You know, wow. that the, the ability of the mind to heal the body is very, very powerful, but it's equally so the mind has the ability to produce disease and that's why what we tell ourselves is so important that's why hypnotherapy is so incredibly powerful because our mind has the ability to to make us sick it also has the ability to heal us so why not take that power of the mind and instead of Com repeating and constantly re-emphasizing the negative messages that you're telling your body, change it and give it positive messages. And you can change the trajectory of your health. Um, I mean, just in the things that I did in my own personal healing path, I actually turned back my cellular age like 14 years. Um, when I started on my path, I looked at least my age, um, which was around 50. Uh, well, it was less than, I was, I think I was 48 when I started, started on my path and I probably looked like I was around 50. Um, when I, after I, um, started on my path, um, you know, first I did a lot of like mind, body, spirit kind of work, phys you know, physical and, um, psychological and and both it's physical and then i did added in nutrition and i did wild fit and within three years um of do with doing all of that work or it was four years like i did a, a telomere test last year and i had actually turned back my cellular age by 14 years my telomere said i was 39 years old and at that time i was 54. wow so it is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can continue doing, you know, eating the standard of American diet, consider continue living on a diet of fear, or you can choose to come from the heart. You can choose to nourish your body, to love yourself enough to nourish your body well, you know, um, and the life that you are going to live 10 and 15, 20 years down the line is dependent on the, the decisions that you're making on a day-by-day -day basis. What you put in here, what you put in here, um, what, you let, what you let in here. Yeah. And it's, uh, you, just talk, you just touched on the emotions of love. I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, we know that hearts break Mm. Heart in harmony changes mm -hmm. biochemistry, heart which coherence. is dropping out of the head mm -hmm. into the heart. Heart, Absolutely. heart coherence, creating this harmony or coherence between the head brain and the heart brain. The, the heart has a brain, 40,000 mm -hmm. sensory neurons. And the, the gut, brain. the gut has a brain as well. You've got to get them all in alignment. <laughs> yeah. So when you have the heart the coherence between all of the three, that's when the magic mm -hmm. happens. In the and it's so really. incredible what we can do to heal the body. I've got I've got mm -hmm. clients who have, in fact, you know one of them. She she was doing anti-inflammatory everything for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until she started doing the heart brain stuff that she started mm -hmm. not having fibromyalgia attacks mm -hmm. flare ups because mm -hmm. the immune system she was in she was in control of the immune system through the power of her thought. And right. you, you know, well, autoimmune disease is a classic way that we attack ourselves. 
-hmm. You know, when you're having these negative thoughts, I'm worthless, I'm powerless, I'm, you know, all of these, it's your your mind is repeating things and re-emphasizing this. You're actually attacking your body. You attack your cells on a cellular level. And that's classic for autoimmune disease. And yeah. that an autoimmune disease is very often associated with skin outbreaks as well. You know, the skin is the most suggestible organ of the body. Um, so you have amazing amount of power to, to produce skin problems if you're thinking the wrong kind of thoughts and you also have the ability to, to heal those by changing your thoughts it's very very powerful it's huge when i when i was working with people i mean initially most of my results came from nutrition but it, mm -hmm. being in a more relaxed and zen state and understanding what you said mm -hmm. earlier about having a different reaction to our environment because we have the power to respond in any which way we choose to any kind of environment or external mm -hmm. environment. I always use the example of a traffic jam. Two people can respond very differently in exactly the same traffic jam. You can both be late for work, there's some kind of accident. One person can be like super chilled out, listen to a podcast, maybe the Vitality Secret podcast, you know, get really educated, <laughs> and or, or music and just chill out. And the other person might respond to that event in a very irate way and start effing and blinding or swearing and uh, mm -hmm. cutting off people and just saying how much they hate traffic. It's a two two completely different responses mm -hmm. in the same circumstance. Yeah, and, and that's setting up a it. biological cascade. It's setting up exactly. a biological cascade. Cortisol, adrenaline. Mm -hmm. ah, zh, 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 zh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and people, people, we know all people who are highly strong. I've been guilty guilty of it mm -hmm. it's like it's a crime i've i've demonstrated being highly strong before and i can mm -hmm. feel in my body what happens and mm -hmm. I, I can only look at some people if they're responding to this event very very uh in a not a very calm way you can see what's happening in the body virtually so mm -hmm. and what i our world our reality through thought and emotion we can change the biology of the body i mean how cool is that it's amazing. Sorry, it yeah. <laughs> and um, it's so powerful. And the problem is that the Western medical paradigm just totally misses that and they discount it. And they, and, but there are physicians that are coming around. There's more and more. I mean, I participated in the whole Health Medicine Institute a few years back with Lisa Rankin. And she has a book called The Fear Cure, which is really a wonderful examination of this very topic. I highly recommend it to you or any of your listeners to check that out. It's uh, called The Fear Cure. And she goes into the biochemical nature of like, how does that this work, this fear response, and what kind of impact does it have on the body? And the research shows that when you respond out of fear, when you respond as the victim, when you collapse, then you store that in your tissues and you're more likely to get sick. Whereas if you react, respond out of courage, it's like, okay, this happened to me and I'm not going to let it happen again. And then I get motivated and I, and I take action and that sort of thing. Those people, th that same situation can actually have a protective effect. Amazing. Because and it's all in how you choose to respond and how you choose to respond has to do with the thoughts that you're thinking. And you can change those thoughts, whether you change them on your own through a series of affirmations or whether you go see a hypnotherapist and to get at the underlying cause and rewire that shit. You know, it's each of us is operating on the operating system that was installed when we were kids. Mm -hmm. So that's like running a modern program on a first generation Macintosh and computer, you know, one of those big boxy looking things and then trying to run a, a program from 2020 on that. It, it, it doesn't work. You need to re you need to update your programming. And yeah. there's different ways of doing that. You can do it somatically. You can do it through hypnotherapy. You can do it through affirmations. You can do it through, you know, all sorts. It's just like, how long do you want it to take? If you want to, if you want to get through more layers of the programming faster, you go to somebody else who can help you. For sure. And on that note, we're coming up to the hour. Mm -hmm. You just stopped from hypnotherapy, and this is something yeah. you do. I'm how do our listeners find you? 
Yeah, I'm a rapid transformational therapist, and you can find me at katharina.amadora at Amadora Transformations is my dot com is my email, and my website is amadoratransformations.com. So you can find me there. You can also find me on Facebook um, at Amadora Transformations or uh, my personal page is Katharina Amadora, but I don't have much room for friends. Um, so um, prefer for you to, to find me through my business page. Great. We just uh, rapid transformational therapist. Were you trained by Mar Marissa? Peer? I was trained by Marissa Peer, yes. I spoke mm -hmm. to her a few weeks ago. She yeah. might be doing an interview for my, for my book. Oh, that and, would be great. Uh, yeah. And of course, she was there for mm -hmm. our uh, for our event. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your, I always ask my listeners, or sorry, my interviewees this question what would be your number one vitality secret, Katerina? My number one vitality secret? Mm. If I had to just go with one, I love to dance. You know, so taking time to dance is really important. Um, having, in terms of my mental health, my mental state, you know, being able to spend time dancing at least a couple times a week just makes a huge, huge difference for me. Um, you know, of course, you know, I, I, I eat good. I, 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 I'm very good at following, you know, a wild fit lifestyle. So. For me, that is so effortless that I I don't even have to try to eat well because I don't want to eat the junk. So that's n nothing that, you know, hydration is also super, super important. I'm terrible at drinking enough water, <laughs> even though I know it's important. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say just finding some sort of physical activity that that lights you up and that makes your soul sing and that helps you feel connected to your body and fully present in your body, I think is an amazingly healing. I'm actually starting a podcast called um, the medicine of movement and it's mm. all about how we can heal each other, heal ourselves through a movement. And I'm going to be interviewing people who work um, with movement and healing the body. Um, dancers and um, people who work with martial arts and um, yoga, qigong, all those kinds of things. Yeah. Brilliant. Movement as medicine. Such a good point that you just made because mm -hmm. we can enjoy moving. It doesn't have to be a chore. It doesn't have to be exercise. It doesn't have to be running for hours a day. It, it can be no. going to the gym for hours. We can just move and dance mm -hmm. and fight surf and windsurf and mm -hmm. uh, snowboard. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> yeah. um, Thank you. Can, enjoy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and well, being present in the body, you know, having that flow state, you can achieve that flow state through dance. You can achieve that flow state through surfing, um, mm -hmm. through running. There's being in that flow state is am amazing. And so anything that you can do that gives you so much joy that it helps you put, put you into that flow state, I think is amazing. Brilliant. I love that so much. Thank you so much, Katerina. That's, uh, I think you've shared some amazing gems of uh, information <laughs> and advice there. So thank you. It's been a thank pleasure you. having you on. Thanks for having me. You take and care. Link, uh, yeah, I'll put the link to uh, your site below this video. And on the that would be great. And put a link to my business page. I want more people to like it. I created a new business page because I changed my name and it's been a chore trying to get um, people into the new version of my business page. So, Sure, we'll do that. Great. Okay. Thank you, Katerina. And thank you, everyone. Please share if you found this useful and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye.